Welcome back to the channel and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make a jar of candy in Blender 4.2. You can see over here this is the result. Um, really simple modeling but with a really kind of nice result. So we'll be doing the modeling, the materials and just kind of like setting up this scene here. So I hope you enjoyed this and today we have a sponsor. If you want to take your 3D skills to the next level then you're going to love today's sponsor Wing Fox. So one of the courses on here you'll love is this one that takes you through the process of taking a 3D scene in Blender and turning it into a really awesome concept piece like this. Not only do you get the first two lessons for free before you want to commit and pay, um, you can also go, they have a whole bunch of resources, you can have discussions and over here you can see some details. This course has over 23 hours of video, four downloadable resources, lifetime access and you only need Blender or Photoshop or something similar to Photoshop. So that's definitely one you want to check out. Another one and this course is really interesting. We all know materials can be really tricky in a Blender but this one takes you through pro level materials, 17 different types all in one video, 30 hours of content and downloadable resources. Once again you get lifetime access and it's beginner friendly. So if you're interested in learning materials at an industry level, high-end professional stuff, this one is going to be something you're really going to enjoy as well and it's at a reasonable price for 30 hours of high quality content. So if you're ready to take your skills to the next level, definitely go into the description below where you'll find the appropriate links that'll take you to where you can sign up and start using WingFox. So let's jump into the tutorial. Okay, so when you see an open up in Blender, let's select all the default objects and press delete. Now we're going to go shift A, we're going to add in a circle. We're going to tab into edit mode and let's go to our vertex select option. In our top view, we're just going to select the corner vertex here on the very side. Control I to inverse the selection and then press X and delete the vert. So now we only have one vert left over here. We're going to go over here to our modifiers, add, search and then type in screw, get a screw modifier. And then in our front orthographic view, with the single vertex active, we're going to go E to extrude and Z and we're going to extrude it up like so. And this is kind of like our jar, but we're going to grab the bottom vertex here, move it up a bit. And then just go E to extrude a few times. So I'm pressing E and I'm going to keep going and just rounding it out at the bottom. And then I'm going to go E to extrude and I'm going to go up a little bit and in until it touches in the middle. So we kind of have this profile forming here like that. Then at the top, you can grab the very top vertex. And you can kind of extrude it as well, make it kind of round and then flange the jar up like this to kind of make a candy jar like this. And maybe up like that. And then if you wanted to, you can just go E to extrude and then just extrude inwards. So I'm extruding, extruding, just to add some thickness to the inside of the jar like this. So in our front view, I'm just gonna keep extruding. I'm just gonna make sure it all matches up nicely. I'm going to extrude over here and I'm going to extrude down to about here, not all the way to the bottom. And then here I'm going to go E to extrude and just kind of convex it in here like so. Going in and then meeting in the middle. So now we have a profile like this. And let's come here and enable the merge. Tab back out. Let's come to the drop down and apply that. Add modifier, search and type in sub. And let's give it a subdivision surface and bump that up in the viewport as well. Now in edit mode, you can always grab the top two edges, these two here, and go shift E just to tighten up that bevel on the corners so it doesn't get affected as much by the subdivision surface mod. So we can come here at the subdivision surface mod and click on this button here and we can kind of see it um, all hug the topology quite nicely. So now we have a jar. So we're going to tab back out and now in our front view, we're going to go shift A. We're going to add in under our mesh options a UV sphere. We're going to right click and go shade smooth. And let's go G and move it up. S to scale it. And this is going to be the size of your candy. So I'm going to go something like this. Move it over here. I'm going to go control A and make sure to apply that scale. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my materials, add material. I'm going to call it um, candy. And I'm going to go to my render settings, change it to cycles. And I'm going to come here to the render max samples and change that to 50, like so. So now I'm just going to save this somewhere on my computer. Okay, the blend file. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this candy here. I'm going to come to frame one. I'm going to go to my physics. I'm going to go and give it a rigid body. And I'm going to come down and change the shape here under the collision 
to sphere. And I'm going to select the jar and make that a rigid body. And I come to the drop down here under the shape and make that mesh. And we're going to come here to the type and make it passive. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we're going to see this falls in here nicely. So all we have to do now is go back to frame one, select this guy here and go shift D to duplicate and duplicate one going up like this. And let's just come here to the front and move them to the side and go shift D, move them over on the X, shift D, move them over on the X, just so we can fit enough in here like this. And looking at the top view, we want to make sure they can all fall in. So let's quickly go ahead, hit the space bar at frame one to see if that works. Okay, that works quite well. And in my top view, I might just grab these two middle ones and go shift D to duplicate them and place them here as well to see if I can fill the space as much as possible. So something like that should be good. And then in the very front view, I'm gonna select all of these and go Shift D to duplicate and Z and just move them up. And then go Shift R to repeat that action. And let's go with this many to start with. And then from frame one, let's hit the space bar and let's see if that's enough to fill it. So um, let's have a look. Okay, that's cool. I might just go to frame one again. Shift D to duplicate, just make one or two more. And then from frame one, hit the space bar. There we go, now it's nice and full. So you can fill it up however much you want. But what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna go Shift A, just quickly add in a circle under the mesh options, add in a circle. I'm gonna go G, Z and move it up. S to scale it and then in edit mode, I'm gonna press F to fill that face. E to extrude it up and then S to scale. And the idea here is just to kind of make like a cork plug. And I might just go in here like that to make sure it all looks good. And what you can do is you can tab back out. You can go to your modifiers, add modifier, search and get a bevel. So get a bevel modifier. And then let's just make that amount smaller, bump up the segments. And then let's also go add search and type in sub and get a subdivision surface. Let's right click and go shade smooth. And now we have a plug. So in our front view, we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a plane. We're gonna go S to scale that plane up, like so. And we're gonna tab into edit mode, grab this edge and select the back edge and extrude it up. And you can select everything, go S, X, and just kind of make it wider. And if you wanted to, you can grab this edge, it's optional, but you can go control B and create a bevel. Then roll the middle mouse buttons if you want that sort of smoother transition. And I might just make the whole thing a little bit bigger and move it back. But we just want kind of like a stage like this. Then back in object mode in the front view. Gonna make sure that this floor is sitting where it needs to be. So in the front view, we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a light, airy light. Let's just go and move one coming from the side, rotate it like so. And under the light properties, let's make it 170. Let's increase the size. And we're gonna go Z and go rendered. And if you want to, you can always go and duplicate another one. Have it coming from the side here. I would say have at least three lights. So Shift D to duplicate again, three light points. But if you really want this to look good, you can go Shift D and have a light kind of coming from the back. And that's gonna give us some nice rim lighting like this. And let's go in the front view, shift A, let's add in a camera. And in our side view, let's move it back and then press zero to go into camera view, like so. You can go control B and drag over your camera to limit the rendering to the camera view. And once you have something like this, you can select the glass jar, go to your materials and then click new and then call it glass. And you can come here to the transmission, give it a value of one and under the roughness here, bring that down to 0 0.05. It's still not looking um, like it should. So what we might have to do is just tab into edit mode, go over here and come to the normals. And we can see that the normals are a bit messed up. So let's press A to select everything. Alt N and recalculate the outside. And now the normals are facing the right way. So if we go back into object mode and we press Z and go rendered, we can now see our glass is behaving the way it should. Then let's select our plug here at the top and go new. Let's just call this cork. And for now, let's just give it a base color that's kind of like cork color. And now to do more, let's just grab one of these candies. We've already added the material earlier. 
But let's just go into rendered mode and let's just come here to the materials property and give it a nice color. And let's bring the roughness down for now. And those are looking really good. So let's now go back into our, or go over here into our shading workspace. Let's select this cork at the top. We're gonna go shift a search and get a noise texture. Plug the color into the base color here. Shift a search and get a color ramp. Place it here and then go shift D to duplicate it and plug that color into the bottom one as well. Then go shift a search and get a bump. Plug the color into the height and then the normal into the normal of the principled. Give it a strength of 0.2 or 0.3. Come over here and drag on the vector and type in coordinate and just go texture coordinate generated. And now we're gonna make the scale 12 and let's come here to the color ramp and let's drag this value up. Let's make this lighter value and let's make it brown and drag this guy down and give it kind of like a cork color, orangey kind of yellow. And then come here to the roughness and just bump it up to nine. Or that's the detail and then the roughness to two like this. And now if we go up here and we go Z and we go rendered, we can see we have our cork material over here at the top. Now with the glass, we can select that. We can come over here to the glass material and take the base color and drag the slider all the way up to one. And then let's select our background, the floor here and go new. Let's give that a base color that's darker. And then let's come here to the specular and let's take this tint and make that value darker as well. So we don't get as much um, reflection and bounce lighting. So now we can grab this very backlight and we can go ahead and move it and just try and kind of get something from the side. You might have to move it back just a little bit. Now, before we can render all of this out, we just need to go over to our scene properties. We need to go to rigid body world and then we need to go over to our cache and let's just give this, I'd say 200 on the cache. And let's just click on bake and it'll bake this simulation into our blend file. So now if we go back to our layout, we can drag through here. You can see it falling in and you can find any position you want, but I'm gonna go until they're all kind of settled. And then I'm gonna also go render and just render image to test this out. And there we have it, a jar of candy in Blender. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Definitely check out some of my other stuff and um, I'll see you next time for another tutorial.